How's everybody doing? This is Yanko Maceda, founder of Tabanero Cigars, where we believe in the enjoyment of craftsmanship that allows you to stop time, reflect on life, and plan the future ahead. What an amazing morning. How to start your morning with so much tobacco around you. High quality tobacco. And let's talk a little bit. Let's do at least half an hour on fermentation. And it is a crucial part of the process because it will do an amazing, amazing uh, work job on the taste of the cigar. Fermentation is crucial. I think that after a farmer does an amazing job growing the tobacco and air curing the tobacco, fermentation is the next step. So you really have to know what you are doing. And even if you are really knowledgeable about fermentation, it is intense, time consuming, time consuming and people turning and turning this pilon of 2,000 pounds. As you can see, it has a little channel, wood, wood chamber in here where you put the, the thermometer to always be reading temperature on the pilon. And let's talk about why it's so important fermentation. Usually you ferment between eight to a year you have this pilon here sitting, turning and turning and turning. But every time a uh, tobacco producer or a cigar producer needs to uh, speed up the process because of production, that's where the mistakes are done. Uh, this time that I've been in here in Esteli, Nicaragua, visiting many different uh, factories. Right now, I'm at a point of 10 different factories that I have visited for my boxes. Uh, offering my boxes. Of course, you know, the conversation start with boxes, but uh, in a little bit they, they find out, they probably knew who I am or some, they don't know. And when I mentioned that I also make cigars and I talked about my, my amazing clients, how much they support me, how much they believe on my palate, on my, my ethics, automatically they go, wow, this is the right person to make him some cigars. So they go ahead and give me some cigar for me to try. Well, there's been some exceptions to my experience, but most of the tobacco that I have tried right here in Esteli, they are being under fermented, under fermented. And and um, the first sign when it's under fermented, and again, we're talking about premium cigars. We're not talking about a short filler or a sandwich. When you light up a short filler, um, most of the time you have dust inside of the cigar and it kind of dries out your throat. It makes you cough a little bit, but we're not talking about short filler. We're talking about premium cigar. So if you light up a premium cigar and you find yourself coughing and coughing and coughing, that is under fermented tobacco. If you light up a cigar and it has too much sweetness, like you're burning resin, like, like it's too sweet, like banana, banana leaf sweet, that's under fermented tobacco. If the cigar... If the cigar, after about an inch of burning, the cigar gets really soft, really soft, it's under fermented tobacco. If you hold a cigar about a quarter of an inch already and you put your fingers really gentle, you don't press, really gentle, around, around the heat, and you can hold it like this, means that it's well fermented tobacco. If it's under fermented, it will be so hot, yeah, you can hold it for too long because you will burn your fingers. That means also that it's under fermented. <clears throat> They're getting tobacco ready up front, and uh, the supervisor that you guys are going to meet in a little bit, he's, he's with the whip, he's with the whip, aligning things how they're supposed to be doing, because they're going to be start doing two more pilones like this. There's one here, and then two down there, and they're going to put another two more. Um, I'm going to get into it, what type of tobacco is this in a little bit, and what, uh, what um, part of the plant, but... Uh, let's keep talking about under fermented tobacco. Under fermented tobacco, doesn't matter how long I will put the cigars to rest, 
they're not going to get better. They will get worse even if you ferment and ferment for a long time because it's under fermented. So I have the feel that because there has been a big boom related to COVID-19 of so many people smoking, big companies making so many cigars, producing so many cigars, they're pushing tobacco right now like crazy, like crazy, and it's not well fermented. So I've been thinking about it, watching what's going on, and going, Yanko, uh, are you going to make cigars this year? Uh, are you going to be part of this, what's going, or what's going on right now? Uh, Raymond Page has mentioned many times, Yanko, I don't know if you have a crystal ball. I don't know if you knew what was happening, but you did amazingly, amazingly doing 700,000 cigars between the last two years. I said, um, I've been in the industry 11 years, and I, I'm pretty analytic in a sense of paying attention to what's going on. I'm not uh, book smart, but I'm more visual. And, and things, things, the things that I really, I'm really passionate about it, they stay in my head. So I saw the whole, the whole thing of, um, of when there was on rebel, when it was uh, political issues in here in Nicaragua. I saw when the, and this was recently, uh, 2018, 2019, I saw when the, big, the biggest two companies decided to deplete their, their inventory by 50%, and that put a lot of uh, rollers out of work. And then when everything was recuperating, coming back, COVID-19 hits. So the industry has been like this too recently, too recently. And everybody's talking about the, when the boom of the 90s, when it died out on the 97, this is different. This is, not, this is a completely different. We have a more well-educated client right now, customers right now, so this is different. So the industry is industry has been going like this, like this. I feel that it was like this with Kobe, and everybody was rushing, rushing, rushing. Uh, when I got to Raymond Pages, he was kind of on his beginnings. The situation wasn't as bad, so there was really, really good tobacco. Uh, I'm not saying there's bad tobacco right now. I'm just saying that something is telling me, my subconscious is telling me, just sit down and watch. You got plenty of cigar for this year and the next year to go to Vegas. So I have easy, easy, a year and a half to wait and see what's going on. And this has teach me, this has uh, show me that when I feel things are good, go ahead and make as many cigars as I can. Because you don't, you don't know when the cycle's going down if what's going to happen. So you always got to be ready. My good friend Ulysses Jan has always told me from the beginning, if you're in the cigar industry, if what you do is sell cigars, you better have all your money on cigars, on good cigars. And that's what I've been doing since, the, since days one. Since day one, and it has worked for me. So they just finished turning this pilon. I wish I can start it before, but they, they were done. They were going to cover it. And I said, no, no, hold on. Give me one second so, so they can see it, so they can see a pilon. Sure, it's wet. It's wet. Now it's going to be covered in plastic. You're going to see it at the end. And when they cover in plastic, it starts building uh, temperature, temperature, curing those tobaccos. And they will be checking temperature. And in 72 hours, they, 72 hours a week, depending on the temperature, they will turn everything to another, another side. They will be turning the leaf, putting it on another side. They have to, if they want to do it right, they got to do that for nine months. But the question is, how the situation right now that we have with no tobacco, are they going to hold down for nine months? Are they going to stay at six or seven? Two months, it can be a big difference depending on what type of tobacco. So we have, I will watch. I will watch because I'll be coming to Nicaragua every month and I'm moving down to Nicaragua on July for a year, a year and a half, two years, so I can get my brand, keep growing my brand, and I can get the box shop going. So it will give me plenty of time to get to know more of the culture and know exactly what's going on in the tobacco industry. I had a great interview yesterday with Melanie. Melanie, she's in the, she's in the media and in the industry. And it felt good because I was uh, with friends smoking cigars. It was like 9, no, it was 8, 8.30 and her show is in the U.S. at uh, 10 p.m. So 8.30 here, 9.30 in the U.S. So uh, Cigar uh, Rob from Cigar Talk, he, he, he hit me up and says, Yanko, are you free 
uh, uh, do you have time right now for an interview? I said, well, um, I'm pretty close to my apartment that I got good internet. Uh, let me fly over there and I'll be ready. And next thing you know, I was being interviewed by Melanie that she does, she has done a lot of work with Carlito Fuentes, with big brands. So that was amazing. That was amazing that she allowed me to be on her show, interview myself, and let me expose a brand to other, other, other clients, other cigar connoisseurs. So I love it. I love it. I had a blast. I remember that in the beginning I was a little bit nervous and I said, Yanko, you've done this for some time. And, and I have learned that I don't have to really make up anything, any questions you throw me. If I don't know, I said, well, I don't really know that. I'm, I'm more in this scepter. And, and it was really, really easy going, really easy going. I enjoyed a lot. She enjoyed it. We talked about family, tobacco, drinks, and it was great. So if you follow Melanie, uh, we did yesterday one episode, so you can see me in there, and, and I don't know, let me know how do I did with uh, Melanie. Um, it was funny because someone asked me on the show, what is my, uh, what is uh, my um, mentality uh, when it comes to blending? How do, how, do, how do I go about blending? I said, well, um, I try to make it really simple. I hear colleagues in the industry, that they give you a cigar and they go, well, I, I try 50 different cigars to get here. And I, and I go, wow, 50 different blends to get here. Uh, I, th I think that's too much. I think I, when the tobacco is ready, I smell the tobacco and I go, well, it smells pretty good. You can smell the wet tobacco because oh, wet tobacco smells pretty good. You got it got to have to be on the right humidity. And I smell the tobacco and I say, well, it smells good. Let's go ahead now and do a sorullo and try and see how it tastes. If it has good taste, I go, well, now let's go ahead and blend it with something that goes together. And if I'm looking for a mild cigar with a lot of aroma and flavor, I don't put any ligeros. I stay with a nice biso, really mellow biso, not a lot of strength, and a good combination with binder and wrapper, something that you're gonna smoke for 45 minutes and when you get into the end of the 45 minutes, you're looking at a cigar and you're going, wow, this is gonna be finished and I'm really enjoying it. Do I have time to light up another one? That's when I know I did good. I don't, I don't get really complicated, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel. So that's, I'm, I'm simple when it comes to blending, but I do really, really complex cigars with the position of the leaf, with I don't want to front load the cigar, I want to add a, a little bit on the foot of the cigar so it can give you a hint of what's going on and keep you interested. Keep you that when the cigar is burning and it's getting to the right temperature, you will be, you'll be amazed with the cigar that you're smoking and like a good dish of food that you're eating and you're just thinking at the end, because I'm a foodie, you're going, wow, this is amazing. I'm almost done, let me slow down. I want you to do the same thing with a cigar. So, why complicate blending? Why complicate blending? And it went off, it went off. There's a lot of humidity here and it went off. But um, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring uh, Michel. He's, uh, he's the guy in charge of fermentation. He speaks Spanish. And, um, and, and I, will, I will translate, but I want to get it from him. I want to ask questions about the pilones. Questions that I, I, some I know, some I don't, I don't know, and um, and I want to share with you guys. I want to share the experience with you guys because I have learned something that um, I have learned that uh, I'm not really selling a cigar. I'm a pretty bad sales rep. I'm sharing my passion with you guys. I'm sharing my experiences with you guys. I'm sharing my experiences with you guys because. This lifestyle, this industry, it's about experiences. It's about the friendships you can build. It's about the people you get to know. And to always be in a mood that you feel your life is not gonna be long enough to master the craftsmanship. And you will never master, it's an illusion. It's an illusion, I don't think we are, God made us perfect, so I don't think you never master it, but you will get close. Yeah, we'll get, we'll, you will get close. And I think that is enough, that is enough. 
Michel, póntelo ahí con calma, con calma, póntelo. Y tráete la foforera que se me quedé sin... <ríe> This is a Corona Gorda. They did it recently here. So it's it's been it's been aged. It's been aged. It's been aged. But um, but it's uh, it's well. Déjame ver que esté prendido para que funcione bien. Está cajito, muy tenido cerrado. Sí, está cerrada. Ahí está, perfecto. Che, hermano, dime tu nombre y apellido. Carlos Michel Fernández. Carlos Michel Fernández. Michel, oriundo de Pinar de Río, ¿no? Pinar de Río, en la tierra del tabaco. La tierra del tabaco. La tierra ¿Cuánto del tabaco. hace que estás acá? Cuatro eh, años. Cuatro años. En el tabaco. God, he's been here four years, and he's original from Pinar del Río. He's original from Pinar del Río, and I know personally because I have talked to him many times. He's doing a huge sacrifice because he's here by himself. Uh, his family is still in Cuba, so. I've been here two months without my family, and man, my heart is like this. So I can't imagine him without his daughter, without his wife, and his kids, his uh, older kids, being in here by himself. Estoy explicándole a ellos que que yo he estado aquí nada más dos meses sin la familia y estoy tengo el corazón apretado. Imagínese el sacrificio que tú haces. Te juro, te juro, estar aquí. Estar concentrado en lo que estás haciendo y que las cosas funcionen y que no se eche a perder ningún producto ni ni ni, ni esto que hacemos para que lo fume el mundo entero. Y hay que estar concentrado y el mundo y la mente allá, pero un 80% aquí en esto porque hay una responsabilidad en cara. Hay que estar física y mentalmente aquí. Gracias. Well, you heard the word concentrarse, concentrate. It's a key word to be to be focused on what we are doing right here. Uh, and and the reason why we do that is because we here to serve you guys, to serve you guys and we have to do it with the best of us. Eh, es una cosa que yo siempre le digo a los clientes míos que al final lo que nosotros estamos haciendo es sirviéndolos a ellos, sirviéndolos a ellos y para servirlos a ellos con lo mejor hay que estar enfocado, hay que estar concentrado. Vivimos para ellos, mm -hmm. vivimos para hacerle un buen trabajo y que las cosas okay. les lleguen a ellos con la óptima calidad y, y el sacrificio de nosotros va por encima, va adelante eso, un sacrificio que tenemos que hacer. Hoy okay. mismo sábado la gente en su salsa y en su, en su fiesta y uno aquí trabajando, todos los muchachos aquí trabajando <risa> y aquí fajado con esto para que el producto, porque lleve el toque que lleva, hoy, hoy hay que hacerlo y hoy hay que hacerlo, no es mañana. Sí, 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 sí. Y no... Y la gente coge el producto final y no se imagina todo lo que nosotros ponemos, todo lo que nosotros ponemos para que llegue ese producto en, en la mejor calidad a ellos. Así mismo es. Today, you know, today everybody in Esteli, it's, it's, it's party time. It's weekend, everybody's resting at home, uh, cooking with the family. We're here, we're here, working, working, because we love what we do and it needs to be done, so we're here. <clears throat> Cuéntame este pilón, ¿qué material es este? Con vega, con teatro. Ya Un viso. Lo, lo piso ya de, ya de, de, de corte y, y un proceso ya lleva ya dos meses. De en diciembre se recogió en noviembre, noviembre, diciembre, y ya se, se le hizo la primera mojada ahora. Y ya él empieza ya a so los vino colores. con la humedad del campo, ¿no? De cuando lo trajeron de la casa de tabaco. Sí, primero se le seca la humedad que viene, la de grasa, la casa de se le quema de la casa de tabaco. Y ya cuando él seca, se le empieza a dar el proceso, se empieza a mojar. Cuando él se deshidrata, empieza a mojarse y hacer el proceso ya de, de, de curación como tal. It came from the tobacco barn, when they air cure the tobacco. It comes uh, still wet, a little bit wet, because when they're going to take it from the tobacco, uh, barn they have to wet the tobacco so it doesn't so it's not brittle and breaks but before you put it in the pilon it needs to be dry it needs to be dry put them in the pilon two months in pilon and today they put in the first water so hoy es la primera agua hoy lo viraron le pusieron la primera agua cuando estaba en ese proceso de esos dos meses como cuántas como cuántas temperaturas más o menos ellos 
Eh, con la temperatura normal, ¿verdad? Es que... O sea, pero ¿hasta cuánto puede llegar y virarlo? En este primer proceso. 120 te coge en tres días. 120 okay. grados coge en tres días y porque está acabado de mojar y es un tabaco grueso. So it's around 120 Fahrenheit, the temperature that this will take when it's covered. And that's where you need to be really careful because if you go over, you will rotten the tobacco. It will be a tobacco that is kind of dark in the tips and when you smoke it, <coughs> it's kind of like you're smoking a wet, wet cardboard. So you have to be really careful when you're doing that process. Um, eh, el problema siempre que si, se, si la persona se pasa es que pudre el tabaco. Lo pudre, lo, 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 las puntas de la hoja toda negra y tú fumas un puro así con el tipo de tabaco y parece que estás fumando cartón mojado. Yemba. Yemba. Así mismo, así es algo por eso es que Por eso es que él... él es el sacrificio porque es sábado y es sábado o es domingo y es domingo no espera uh -huh, uh -huh. es igual que el campo el día del corte es el día del corte porque se pasa la maduración y no es igual si lo coges tierno no es igual y si te pasa de maduración tampoco es igual él lleva sus días sí, lleva sus días it's uh, he's sharing with me that it's the same thing in the soil in the fields it has the day to cut it it can be before or the next day that's the day that you need to cut the tobacco and hang it It's, everything is pretty is precise when it comes to tobacco to put amazing cigars on your hands. Um, ¿Allá tú cultivaste en, en, en eh, el río? Cultivé, cultivé y trabajé en Canfrisa de curación. Yo soy técnico, de, yo soy técnico agrónomo. Yo soy técnico agrónomo. Yo, yo, yo cociné, o sea, eh, curé tabaco en Canfrisa que es y, el tabaco tapado cuando, para adelantarle el proceso, para hacerla, agilizar la, la producción. He's uh, his, his technician on uh, agronomy, and he is specialized in Cuba on the swamp coolers. Swamp coolers, cafrisa, which is where you put the wrapper to, um, to do a faster process to have a wrapper ready. It's, uh, it's new technology. Uh, it's now something from the back in the days, and it does an amazing job. It does an amazing job. ¿Cómo, cómo ves la diferencia de estos tabacos? ¿Cuál es tu opinión? ¿Cómo ves los, ta los tabacos de Nicaragua uh, en comparación a tu tierra? ¿Tú sientes que Nicaragua es lo mismo o aporta algo nuevo? ¿Aporta algo que el hombre que tiene 60 años y lleva en Europa toda su vida fumando tabaco cubano, cuando prueba estos tabacos del Nuevo Mundo, ¿qué tú crees, ¿Qué tú crees de eso? El empeño y la, y la innovación y la creatividad de los... De lo, de lo... De de la, de, de la, y, y de las Bien. personas que, que tienen que ver directamente con las ligas de los puros, porque hay mucha variedad de tabaco y muchas tierras uh -huh. que tienen diferentes sabores. Y entonces esas personas que tienen ese conocimiento ya y hacen esas ligas y los tabacos son espléndidos. Son, y aparte de eso, la, las tierras están mejores preparadas, se atienden mucho mejor con productos con, y, y aquello se ha decadido mucho en esa parte. No le dan los procesos que tienen que darle aquí. Este, esto, este sacrificio que uno hace, porque esto es de uno. Y esto aquí, esta este es la comida de la familia de uno. Y entonces allá eso se ha perdido un poco. I, I believe uh, what, he's, what he's sharing is uh, what Nicaragua can offer right now with the amount of technology, infrastructure, the really passionate people in this industry. It makes a huge difference with Cuba. Uh, Cuba has lost a lot of that. But let's get into, let's get into of a perfect world. Let me ask him, okay, if it will be a perfect world, do you believe that both countries will have a share in the market? Let's ask him. Okay, vamos a pensar de un mundo perfecto. De un mundo perfecto, Cuba está a millón, todo está bien en Cuba, uh, Nicaragua así, así como está. ¿Tú crees que los dos puros tuviesen espacio en el mercado? ¿O tú crees que si cuando las cosas se arreglaran en Cuba, la gente se olvidara un poco de esto y regresara a Cuba, o si fuese igual? Cada no, cual. no creo, ya esto, ya, ya esto creó una competencia y creó ya una... una y, y se montó en un mercado grande ya. Y Cuba ya tiene el nombre. Cuba lo que, lo que se, 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 se dispararía de nuevo, ¿no? Y sería, sería hacer Cuba Otra opción, de nuevo. otra opción ah, buena. Sí, otra opción. Otra Pero opción estos buena. tabacos son inmejorables, son tabacos de tremenda calidad y... Y no les pide a ningún país del mundo ni ninguna. Eh, son súper tabaco. Oh. Y ya tú llevas tu tiempo aquí y has visto. Sí, sí, sí. sí. Has visto. No, lo, eh, yo hablo con ellos, pero quiero que lo escuchen de tu, ah, de sí, tu voz. Quiero ah, que sí. lo escuchen de tu voz. 
He says that even if, if it's a perfect world and things are even when it comes to passionate uh, individuals, when it comes to infrastructure, he doesn't believe that <coughs> Cuba will take over. He believes that Nicaragua and Cuba, they will have a good share in the market. The people who are already in love with this uh, quality tobacco cigars, they will keep smoking those cigars. So come for him. He, he has a lot more experience in Cuba than, than me or anybody probably that is listening to it. So another question that I always have in my mind, it's uh, if, uh, if let's say Cuba change their system and, and there's more opportunity, do, do we believe that Cuba will keep doing 100% Cuban cigars or they will open their mind to start blending? La pregunta es, vamos a decir que cambió el sistema, que hay más oportunidades en Cuba. ¿Tú crees que los muchachos nuevos, la sangre nueva de Cuba, se mantuvieran mente cerrada en más eso puro con Cuba, con Cuba, o empezaran a mezclar los dos mundos? Sería ¿Qué tú crees? bueno. ¿Pero sí. qué tú crees? No, no, no. Conociendo no. Tú, tú que conoces los nativos allá, que conoces tu gente, ¿tú crees que ellos se abrieran a empezar a traer este producto y ligarlo con los de ellos allá? Por supuesto, por supuesto, sería eh, eh, sería excelente y so, el tabaco de Cuba, al tabaco de Cuba lo que le hace falta es corazón nada más yeah. y pasión, entonces, esto es lo que le hace falta al tabaco de Cuba, entonces, que vuelva otra vez la generación de antes, inculcarle a la, a la juventud eh, eh, el asa, el, otra vez esa, 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 ese, esa pasión, ese mundo esa por pasión, esto, esa pasión sí. y este amor sí. por esto que se perdió allá, pero la tierra está ahí, ahí está la tierra y es el tabaco de Cuba. Y si se lía con esto y, y hubieran fuera, fuera excelente. Excelente. ¿Tú crees que ellos Tremendo. tuviesen mente abierta a descubrir nuevas mezclas, nuevos sabores? Por supuesto. Que, que no conocemos, no los conocemos. ¿Y ellos, ellos no conocen esto? No. ¿Y nosotros no conocemos aquello? No. O sea, los fumadores no conocen. Sí, como... Así es. Sí. Esa, esa mezcla. Sería Digo que excelente. hasta ahora en Europa tú te compras un puro cubano y, bueno, supuestamente es 100% cubano. Todo el mundo, yo converso con muchos de mis clientes, y están muy curiosos por saber qué va a pasar cuando se puedan hacer esas mezclas. Qué, qué nuevos productos van a salir, nuevas vitolas, nuevos sabores que el paladar no ha experimentado todavía. Va a ser una explosión de nuevo. Va a ser una explosión, una explosión, va a ser una explosión. Una explosión. Por eso yo pienso va a ser una explosión. que primero que todo uno no se puede olvidar de sus raíces, primero que todo porque uno viene de ahí y mentira, hasta la hora de comer, uno quiere comer como uno, como uno creció. Uno, tú tienes familia, yo tengo amistades, algunos relativos, no son familias mías, pero son, los considero familia. Y uno no se debe separar completo ni perder la esperanza, porque no hay mal que dure 100 años. No. En algún momento, y nosotros estamos jóvenes, es, existe la posibilidad que veamos eso que va a venir. Entonces no nos podemos separar completo de, de la idea de Cuba. I believe that we're still young, we're still young. It is important to stay connected with Cuba, with Pinar de Río. Because I believe we're going to see the change at some point. At some point, we're going to see the change. And I can't wait to start tasting and discovering new blends that you've never seen before. Like Condega, Briso Condega, Con Vuelta Abajo, Pinar de Rio, uh, Cuban wrappers with Nicaraguan fillers. Uh, it's, it's unlimited the new, the new experience we're going to have when that is possible. And I can't wait to see that happening because I'm always looking, I'm always saying, I want to I want to get the, an amazing cigar, I want to do a perfect cigar, but uh, that will never happen because I'm always, my palate is always maturing, elevating, and I'm always looking for new flavors, new experiences. And I think Cuba, when the day comes that we can combine Nicaragua and Cuba, it's going to be an amazing experience, an amazing experience. Hey. ¿Cómo te imaginaras tú una, una liga de, de, del tabaco de Estelí, con la fortaleza y los tabacos que has visto, con unas tripas de con, un de, con unas tripas en corojo y una capa puesta de Pinar de Río? Debe ser un, debe ser un fenómeno. Debe ser, y no quiero usarlo incorrectamente, no porque sea muy fuerte, debe ser una bomba de sabores, una bomba de complejidad. Va a ser un puro súper complejo, súper complejo, porque Cuba se se conoce, es eh, muy famosa, por la, la, lo dulce de su tabaco, lo noble que es. Y es un tabaco que es hasta difícil de descubrir cuando empiezas el tabaco si es fuerte, si tiene así, fortaleza, así. porque esconde muy bien la fortaleza. 
Entonces, un poco esa pimienta de Nicaragua con esos dulzores de allá. Debe ser, <risa> debe ser, va a ser otra explosión, va a ser otra explosión, va a ser otra, otro nuevo mundo, otro nuevo mundo. Which is talking about, you know, the, the sweetness of Cuban tobacco, <coughs> how gentle when it's well fermented the Cuban tobacco is that you not even know, you don't really know, when, if, when you don't smoke cigars and you light up a Cuban cigar, and the first uh, inch, Uh, you think it's going to be a mild cigar because uh, Cuban tobacco is pretty docile. So half of the cigar, you stand up from the chair and you're going, wow, and Cuban tobacco is pretty good hiding the strength. So I would like to know, I would like to taste that sweetness, that strength with some of the, the spicy, the papery, the papery of the Nicaraguan tobacco. I think it's going to be an amazing experience. And if anybody knows that someone is already doing it, please send me one of those cigars to try. I don't think it's happening right now. I don't think it's happening right now because Cuba needs a lot of infrastructure, passionate new blood in the industry that they don't believe is just money. They, they want to do it because they have purpose in life through the tobacco industry. Yo no creo que en este momento esté pasando eso de tabacos así tan fenomenales porque yo me he dado cuenta que ese sistema hace al muchacho joven que todo tiene que ser justificado con dinero y lo que lo empuja es con dinero y nada más están pensando en dinero. Y esta industria, antes del dinero, hay que ponerle mucha dedicación y pasión, que no hay dinero que pague todo esto. No hay dinero que te pague estar en sábado aquí es. trabajando. No hay dinero. Así es. es la pasión que uno siente y Así el propósito es. que uno siente haciendo esto. Entonces es muy importante que esas generaciones de Cuba entiendan de que el dinero viene después. Que lo primero que, que va a venir. Va a venir. Si Pero primero le... tiene que tener, disculpa, eh, primero no, no, tiene no. que tener la, la, la pasión y el amor y, y que, que lo había en Cuba, que lo había, que lo hubo hasta hace los campesinos, porque yo, yo, yo me crié dentro de matas de tabaco y los campesinos salían por la mañana y, y, y era la vida de ellos, era y, la vida de ellos. Y, y séme sincero, ¿con cuándo vivían esos campesinos? Ah, ¿Cuáles eran las cosas primordiales para esos campesinos? Comida, la familia, eh, comida, comida, familia y un traguito por la tarde. Y, un traguito por la y su tarde. buen tabaco ya, yeah, esa era la vida. Eso era todo. Por, eso, por eso esos tabacos salían tan, tan, tan increíbles. Porque el dinero es una cosa después, después. Mientras que ellos sintieran que su familia estaba bien, eh, bien prohibida, salud, el dinero podía llegar después. Cuando los campesinos empezaron a emigrar para pa las ciudades, se acabó el tabaco. Se acabó el y se, acabó la, se acabaron las ollas. Eso fue un fenómeno grande. El campesino que no estuviera al lado de, de, de su tierra y ahí en la casita en su tierra, cuando, cuando pasaba eso, todo era perfecto. Ya después que empezó... Se acabó todo. Si no estás ahí, el mismo Ander Fernández, Ander vive en su tierra, sí, ahí, sí, sí. Con, Ulises, junto, pagar, junto, a, hermano. junto a tabaco, y, yeah. eh, pero vive ahí. Vive ahí, el hombre, el hombre vive dentro, dentro de rodeado yeah. de tabaco, vive el hombre. Yeah. Pero esa es la pasión, Ander. Okay. Ese hombre, su yeah. casa, su casa, donde está la mayoría del tiempo, es ahí en el corte de tabaco. Pero esa es la pasión, y por está, eso ha logrado que ha logrado. Y estamos hablando que para que, que, que quisiéramos imaginarnos qué va a suceder cuando se une el tabaco cubano con el de Nicaragua. Queremos saber qué sabores van a, van a aparecer. Pero yo le digo a él que entonces estas generaciones nuevas tienen que cambiar porque no pueden estar nada más pensando en el billete. Tienen que pensar en, en, en el producto, en la... How are you guys? Uh, let me introduce Ulysses Janet. This is one of my biggest mentors. How you doing, guys? Uh, Ulysses, it was the first person who really introduced me into the industry. You guys know I have mentioned it many times in my Bye. Sunday life that um, I'm here because of Ulysses. Ulysses is a mentor who told me from the beginning, you're in the cigar industry, you concentrate on cigars. Don't be buying furniture, don't be buying TVs, don't be buying crap. Buy tobaccos and make good cigars. And since day one, many things that he has shared with me, they stick to my head and it has really, really worked for me. Ulysses, just tell a little bit what you do for this amazing industry with your importation exportation business. Well, about six years ago, we decided to give service, uh, give a little bit more service than anybody else. So we opened an import export uh, in the United States. So we, we then four years later, down the road, we decided to be on both ends. So we came here to Nicaragua City and we're doing the same thing that we do in the States with a little bit thing different. Now from here, we can export to Europe, Asia. I mean, wherever you want your cigars to be at, we're the ones. So that's what we're doing right now here in Esteli. And, uh, and like Ulysses says, we are a triangle in a sense 
that we be, because we've been he's been in the industry a lot longer than me, almost 20 years. I've been um, when he first got me into it, 2007. It can be, I don't know, 14, 15 years, but really manufacturing cigars. I've been doing it for 11 years. So um, when I tell someone, you need help with export input, this is the person, it's because I have built a long relation with him. And believe me, you don't want your shipment to be lost or not knowing where it is or just waiting for the last minute to know when it's going to arrive. So when it comes to a company that is on top of it, that like any human beings in any company, uh, air, air cargo, whatever, you encounter difficulties, they resolve it. They resolve it and their service is outstanding. Standard, uh, outstanding in a sense that they're on top of it all the time, all the time. And I don't, I'm not gonna talk about pricing. You should, you should find out how competitive they are. <laughs> they're pretty aggressive, pretty aggressive. <laughs> Michelle, entonces, Estás contento. Súper, súper. Eh, yo me levanto todos los días y loco por llegar a la fábrica a ver los tabaqueros, ver la gente trabajando, el olor del tabaco, no puedo vivir sin eso. Eso es para mí la... No sé. Ya sí. es el diario ¿Un propósito? Normal. ¿Un propósito? ¿Eso es lo que le da propósito a tu vida? Me levanto el sábado contento y estamos aquí trabajando sí. y, y todo el mundo fe, fe, fajado y todo el mundo en la lucha y, y contento, contento, de verdad. Raymond te lleva bien. Ah. <risa> Raimond. Raimond, felicidades mi hermano, feliz cumpleaños. Tremendo. Yeah. Un, un potencial cuando empiece ese mundo de liga. Un potencial sí. grande en ese mundo. Y un tipo, muchacho de, sí. de vasto sí. conocimiento. Sí, ya que a Vamos a ver. Sí. All right, guys. Um, I, I hope you guys enjoy it. Please throw me any questions. Uh, they're going to cover the pilón now so you guys can see the process. So remember, the only reason we are here on Earth is to serve others and to serve you guys with the best of us. And I'm always, this is Yanko Maceda, founder of Tabanero Cigars, where we believe in the enjoyment of craftsmanship. Y fumándose, fumándonos un buen Maceda, un, buen Maceda. un conérico por la mañana, que es digestivo <laughs> y primera. You see, I'm not the only one. It's most conérico in the morning. Me mi hermano. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias.